Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Venom Let There Be Carnage released a trailer with Eddie Brock's prison pal, Cletus Cassidy Carnage, in a movie set in Sony's MCU, uh, that is Mrs. Chen universe. Well, I guess it's her universe until Venom cookie monsters her. C is for Chen lady, your face looks so yummy. La 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 la. Better restock that chocolate. So it looks like Andy Serkis tried to scoop us with a director breakdown, but where Serkis held back on revealing too much, I have come through this trailer frame by frame to find all the clues he might not have wanted me to find. Spoiler warning in case any of my theories are right, but if not, I don't care because it's more fun to be surprised. We open in San Francisco, Eddie Brock's home, where Eddie wrote, rules, no eating people. Apparently the only rule under this roof since they established it at the end of the first film. You cannot just go around eating anybody that you want to. I cannot. No, you cannot. It's written on the back of a pizza box, maybe even so Dini's, the restaurant they were headed to when Eddie made that rule. But notice how covering the flat are a whole bunch of M&Ms. You see a bag on the fridge, a bag on the chair, little baggies all over the ground. Also a dispenser, it looks like by the coffee, since Venom's favorite foods other than people are chocolate and tater tots. Live chicken roam around. Can never have too many eggs. There's one on the coffee table pecking at a magazine. It's a bit hard to tell, but it's red and yellow cover. It does kind of look like that magazine of Stan Lee that Venom later adjusts on Mrs. Chen's stand. He sings along to the music of Let's Call the Whole Thing Off. Originally from the 1937 Ginger Rogers Fred Astaire film Shall We Dance, music by George and Ira Gershwin. It's just pairing Eddie and Venom as a sort of odd couple, struggling to talk, but then realizing they're essentially thinking the same thing. Oh, and a nasty boy alert here, but as Eddie pours the OJ, where is Venom wiping on Eddie? Like, I'm pretty sure it goes under his bathrobe behind his backside. And that's a booty hole. Like, wherever the Venom arm is coming out of, maybe he made a mess and he's having some courtesy to mop up after himself. I'm just saying, I've had worse roommates. But before we continue, thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Raid Shadow Legends has a whole world of amazing looking champions from 14 different factions, each with their own lore. Use the links below to download Raid yourself to your mobile phone or PC. One of Raid's factions are the Banner Lords, basically medieval knights, all righteous and covered in cool armor. They're down on their luck after wars with the non-human orcs and skinwalkers, but they're looking to take back their land by swinging some gnarly looking weapons to do so. My favorite Banner Lords champion is the Stag Knight, one of the most useful champions in the game, despite having some pretty impractical horns coming out of the helmet. I'm a big fan of gearing champions, like you tweak the weapon or boots on a champion to change their stats and how they work in the PvP or PvE battles. And Raid just released an insane amount of new content. There's 11 new champions and almost 200 brand new missions to complete with an exclusive legendary champion as your reward if you finish them all. Raid also added five top new levels to almost every single dungeon in the game. Raid's getting bigger and better every single month and it's never been easier to get started. And on top of the champions I've talked about already, there's just a whole bunch of other goofballs that you can play with. Like Silly and the Lucky here. Think he's Irish? Dude even took the time to get like four banana leaves in that helmet. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on my links and support my channel by downloading Raid today. Once you're in, you can find me in game under the name New Rock 2020. When you play, all your rewards will be waiting for you here. And folks, it really is that easy to play. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. It's important to note that Venom is using a knife to chop up those mushrooms, as opposed to sharpening his own tendril, for one, more sanitary. But also, Andy Serkis notes one of the things that distinguishes Carnage is his ability to shapeshift his molecular structure into mist, into knives and other weapons, which puts Venom at a disadvantage. Another little detail, I like how Venom tucks Eddie's chair in as if this is all a romantic meal and he doesn't want Eddie to make too much of a mess on himself. Also, he spilled what looks like a handful of Advil for Eddie on the table by his coffee because this might be a bit painful. But check out what Eddie is holding in his hand. That is a postcard with red writing on it. And later, the shots of Cletus Cassidy in prison show him starting to write this same postcard addressed to Eddie Brock using ink that I'm pretty sure is his own blood, at least basing on him writing Welcome Eddie in his Dada is arterial spray in the Venom post credit scene. So Cletus Cassidy is the serial killer from the Marvel comics who becomes Carnage after sharing a prison cell with Eddie Brock and gets latched onto by an offshoot of the Venom symbiote, fusing with Cassidy's sadistic deranged mind to become Carnage, arguably the most violent and disgusting Spider-Man villain. When he was a kid, Cletus tortured and killed pets. He murdered his grandmother. He burned down his orphanage like they don't have enough problems. That orphanage was called St. Estes Home for Boys. And we may actually see that that burning orphanage later in the trailer. So just imagine that mind with a symbiote enhancement. And you get the monster who slaughters people in Times Square, takes over small towns, and murders children in bathtubs. 
Yeah, I know. Now, Andy Serkis says this sequel is set a year and a half after the first film, and that Cassidy allowed only Eddie to interview him because he saw a similarity between them. And now it looks like Cassidy's mailing Eddie at his home, meaning he knows his home address, ugh, with these creepy blood letters. And if Cletus's blood from this card fuses with the Venom symbiote and then gets toted back into prison on a visit, that could be how Carnage is born. And Venom sprays Eddie with ketchup, foreshadowing the bloodshed or at least the bloody red mess of carnage that awaits him. Also staining that Gold State Warrior shirt and turning Eddie into a Detroit Lions fan. Interesting mix there. So you'll note that the title card reads, In Association with Marvel, which is how the 2018 predecessor opened. See, unlike Spider-Man movies produced by Sony, Venom and Carnage are not in the MCU, it looks like. But they are Marvel characters whose film rights are owned by Sony, and they could still appear or at least get referenced in movies like Spider-Man No Way Home, which remains a joint production between Sony and Marvel that Sony is still at the end of the day calling all the shots on. Eddie greets Mrs. Chen, whom he saved at the end of the first film, and if you think about it, had a relatively calm reaction to seeing a man get eaten, and now just casually greets Venom, who salutes back and yes, fixes that Stan Lee magazine on the rack. Remember, Eddie passed Stan in the previous movie, and now this friendly dog walker is on magazines, as more friendly dog walkers should be. Then the camera glides up to San Quentin Prison. I actually think this is the same shot from the 2018 film post credit scene. And in Cassidy's cell are carved doodles. We see a teddy bear, and then underneath that, someone, presumably him, stick figure form, torturing an animal in a cage, I think? With words, sweet death? And then to the left of the bear, a figure holding a severed head. And then below all of it, the phoenix will rise. Oh my god, X-Men Phoenix is right confirmed! No, 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 I'm kidding. The X-Men are formerly Fox, now Disney properties, not Sony ones. So this is just Cassidy declaring his own return from the ashes. And look right above his desk, there's his stick figure self with his hands up, a gun pointed at him, but the bullet loop-de-looping over his head, missing him. Remember, set video last year showed Cassidy dancing in the face of gun fire. This is pre-VFX, presumably this is gonna be the Carnage symbiote deflecting the bullets over his head, which is similar to his doodle. It's like Carnage is gonna let him do what he's always dreamed of doing. Now, most interesting here, the writing on the left is a quote. Thus strangely are our souls constructed, and by slight ligaments are we bound to prosperity and ruin. This is a quote from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's a ponderance on human nature's fickle constitution. One improperly placed piece could doom the soul to a life of evil. Referring to the body parts of dead criminals that Victor used to construct his monster. Cletus Cassidy will too transform from doomed criminal, practically a corpse, to a supernatural monster. In rage, Cassidy punches the wall. If you look there, there's a bunch of crosses carved in, maybe showing a cemetery, similar to the final battle setting in Maximum Carnage, which seems like one of the big influences on this story. But then in the other shot peering into the cell, Cletus has carved a tree with something underneath, maybe the location of one of his victims. In fact, a lot of this stuff could be confessions of the different people he's killed and the way he's killed them. And beneath the tree branch, there is some writing that looks like where they cannot kill, and then at the bottom, you'll have to do something about it. But then to the right, himself in a cage above a tombstone that says, Hell for Vanished Children, with a ton of little faces underneath. Sweet death. And then to the right, there looks like there's a little church there, similar to the drawing that Eddie has in his finals, showing a church with one little figure, which could be Cassidy drawing a childhood memory from the church on the grounds of St. Estes. On Eddie's laptop is a Daily Bugle front page, reading the mind of serial killer Cletus Cassidy, telling us that Eddie's article is writing in the Daily Bugle, longtime employer of Peter Parker. But note that the masthead here is the print edition logo that appeared in the Sam Raimi films, not the digital dailybugle.net Infowars design from the MCU in Spider-Man Far From Home. Andy Serkis said that this film is set in its own world, with these characters, quote, unaware of Spider-Man, which seems hard to buy if it's set in the same world as Morbius, with the same Daily Bugle print logo on an ad asking, where is Spider-Man? And a movie that features the MCU Vulture, someone who previously fought Spider-Man. Either way, it just sounds like Circus's way of saying, don't expect Spider-Man in this film. Though, Sony may be introducing us to all of these villains one by one to inevitably cross them over into a shared universe in a live action Spider-Verse. Maybe coming as soon as Spider-Man No Way Home or a Sinister Six movie beyond that. Maybe also this Sony-verse will have a live action Miles Morales or Gwen Stacy instead of Peter Parker. Alternate Spider-People who just have not yet emerged yet in this world. We see another Daily Bugle copy read by this detective played 
played by Stephen Grant. His name is Mulligan, which could be a nod to Patrick Mulligan, aka Toxin, a symbiote offshoot from Carnage in the comics that could be Mulligan's fate in this film. But Mulligan's bugle reads, The Hidden Victims of Cletus Cassidy by Eddie Brock, the only journalist to ever interview Cassidy. Mulligan seems pissed that Eddie's getting the access that Mulligan and the feds have been unable to get in their desperate search for Cassidy's other victims. Notice how the corner headline reads, Booming tech industry sends people to the streets. Reflecting the gentrification of the San Francisco Bay Area, how the tech industry has priced many people out of their homes and contributed to the area's rising homelessness, but also was like this headline from 2006 because San Francisco has been unaffordable for at least a decade. Notice how behind Mulligan is a map of the city with a few dots by the Tenderloin District. That is the area of San Francisco particularly known for its homeless population. So I am thinking this film will pull from the absolute Carnage storyline, in which Carnage takes over a cult worshipping the symbiote Clinton our deity of Null, and Carnage creates Carnage drones out of homeless people in San Francisco. Yeah, it's really messed up. That's Carnage. Also behind Mulligan is a booking sheet for E. Larson, a nod to Eric Larson, comic book artist and writer from the 90s Spider-Man era who went on to co-found Image Comics. And as Mulligan folds a newspaper, many have spotted text that looks like the word Avengers and Nightmare. Though, I don't think it's Avengers, folks. It could just as easily be Passengers or Scavengers or Messengers or or a guy named Angers. One of these things losing a nightmare something. Parcel or a, a sports game. A night of sleep over making too many Mephisto theories. Overall, this Cassidy's voice asks, every decision we ever make, who do we leave behind? And how do we leave them waiting in the darkness for the rescuer who never comes? And not so suddenly, he kills a spider. Another sign that Spider-Man will be a rescuer who never comes in this movie. Though, we could also be hearing Cassidy preaching from the pulpit to his followers, addressing the way homeless people have been feeling left behind in the darkness. And we visit the Ravencroft Institute. This is Marvel's facility for the criminally insane, known for experimenting on and imprisoning many Marvel supervillains. It was also a setting in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where Electro was experimented on after, remember, when he got electrified by those Oscorp eel that's one of the ones they're bringing back. Now here in the cell is Francis Barrison, AKA Shriek. No, I said Shriek. Played by Naomi Harris from the Bond films. So Shriek is a Spider-Man villain and companion to Carnage, known from that Maximum Carnage storyline, where the two break out from the Ravencroft Institute and go on a killing spree in New York City. Shriek's power is that she can emit powerful sonic blasts, which is why the guards here are all wearing ear protection. Also notice all that soundproofing on the walls. And then the one in the lab coat behind them could be Dr. Kafka from the comics who oversees the Ravencroft. Notice how Shriek has a mark over her eye, a nod to the marking over Shriek's eye in the comics. So the music for the second half of the trailer is Harry Nilsson's Amazing One. One is the loneliest number. Yeah, you know it. I love this song because Nilsson said that he got the idea of those synthy staccato chords. The dun, 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 dun from listening to a phone busy signal. So he recreated this as a C minor chord, which he plays as these kind of staccato beeps. And I love how this trailer deconstructs those chords back to their form, elongating out the beats from each other. Maybe reflecting our man Cletus Cassidy, a lonely, cut off guy from the rest of the world, just trying to get in touch with Eddie Brock, but someone who no longer picks up the phone until those phone busy signals just stretch out and stretch out and stretch out until this guy loses it. So, whether Cassidy gets his symbiote offshoot from those blood cards or some other fluid exchange with Eddie, the Carnage symbiote stops his lethal injection with a little wiggle, ugh, shoots out from his arm up the tube to push back the fluid. What a cool way to show this. And then, if you look at his hands, it looks Looks like the veins and capillaries burst out as micro tentacles of carnage with the rest of carnage snaking up in a mist from his face and his shoulders god what a horrible thing to see if you're one of those victims families and another shot shows two figures walking among the flames of that burning mansion maybe carnage and shriek together if this is the saint estes home this could be among the stops on their rampage after escaping ravencroft and then a shot of shriek screaming in her cell you can see her sonic waves blowing everything around and her breath blasting upward there i love how her scream reverberates throughout the trailer as a punctuating sound effect. 
now. She seems to be reacting from a Daily Bugle, and on it you can see the words Cletus Cassidy does something. Maybe escapes, or a premature headline reading dead or executed. Like maybe her guards delivered this news to her, and she's freaking out, mourning him, without realizing that he's actually coming to break her out. Because, notice the next shot, large red tentacles of carnage are attacking this SUV, and those IV covered walls tells us that this is the Ravencroft Institute that we see in the other shot, so this must be where Carnage is breaking Shriek out. You can see similar tentacles attacking a helicopter and pulling out the gunner. And then prison guards fire at something as staff and inmates flee, probably Cletus emerging from the execution room, which Andy Serkis said that he modeled exactly on the San Quentin lethal injection chamber. And then the trailer's money shot. Nice, so Carnage's design's pretty comic accurate. The veiny claws and the more slender build than Venom. And of course, the gnarly tentacles, each one formed into a different sharpened weapon. Looks like a mace on the upper left. It's a more frontward spiky pokers on the right. And I love how that one just kind of oozes a strand of slime. Now they do light him from behind in both of the shots that we see him. I'm guessing to hide some of the less finished VFX. Notice how Circus also uses a shaky cam to mask it all. But you can see some scaffolding behind Carnage. This is being used to repair a church interior, perhaps the other church we've talked about, because we close on Carnage suspended in front of a stained glass window, a shot that Andy Serkis called his Leonardo da Vinci shot, referring to the Vitruvian Man, but Serkis was otherwise reluctant to go into the shot, which is why you need an independent super nerd to do your breakdowns, because I'll tell ya, churches are important to Carnage, both as the climactic setting of the Maximum Carnage game, and if this church is a bell tower, you know, a place where sonic frequencies could destabilize the symbiotes, but with a title like Let There Be Carnage, a reference to the book of Genesis, the first words God says, we could indeed be looking at some absolute carnage influences where carnage mobilizes the homeless of San Francisco as part of his religious cult, elevating himself to a God. Like the Mary Shelley Frankenstein quote he etched in his prison cell, he sees himself as a formerly inhuman monster who should be dead, but resurrected as this outcast who looks down upon mankind. Comment down below with your reaction to this trailer, and you can support this channel by checking out one of our many great merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything Marvel. Thanks for watching. Bye.